Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be talking about redundant links and creating lag groups within Unify. We could also do this with other devices like our Synology NAS, which I will show you in this video. I made a video about two years ago on this topic, but it's time for a refresh as the Unify dashboard has changed quite a bit. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN, and if you'd like to support the channel, I have affiliate links down in the description below. Within Ubiquity, we could have up to four connections between switches. This would balance the traffic between those ports as well as provide performance improvements. Another reason why we would want to do this, if one of those connections fail, we would have a backup redundant link between the switches. Now let's take a look at the topology of how things are going to be connecting. We have my UDM SE up at the top and we could see that we'll have two links going down to the aggregation switch. We have the first link in port 11 and then another link in port 12. The UDM Pro and the UDM SE don't have link aggregation. So what will happen, one of the links will be in blocking state for spanning tree protocol. But this will be good in case one of these links go down, we'll have that redundant backup link. The same thing goes for between our aggregation switch and the enterprise switch one of the links will be blocked. Also, the same thing will happen with our Synology NAS, which it only has one gig connections. Now, looking at the bottom topology, when we have the link aggregation created, we could see that these links are now 20 gig, and this one is two, and these are theoretical numbers. We could only go as fast as the hardware. These are 10 gig links, but you can kind of think of it as load balancing when we have different data streams going down it. Before we go downstairs to get all these connected together, we need to change port 10 on my UDM SE to be LAN instead of WAN. They allowed us to do this in a previous firmware upgrade. And how we do it, we'll go over to my UDM SE console. We'll click on the UDM SE, and then we'll click on ports and then port management. Now within port management, we could click on port 10. This will bring up the configurable interfaces and these all could either be LAN or WAN interfaces. We could see port 10 is currently WAN 2, so I'm going to hit the drop down and I'm going to put it as a LAN. Now I'm going to apply the changes. And now that's a LAN connection, we could add another DAC cable to that and it will put these in spanning tree protocol for redundancy. So now let's grab some DAC cables, head down to the network rack and get this all connected. Now I'm down at my network rack and we could see a couple DAC cables here. One's going from my UDM SE up to the aggregation switch and one's going from my enterprise switch to the aggregation switch. So I have these 0.5 meter DAC cables from Ubiquity, which are 10 gig. The first one we'll start with is our UDM SE on port 10. So I'm going to put the DAC cable in and then I'm going to connect it to port 32 on my aggregation switch. Since the UDM SE, we can't do aggregation between these two links. It doesn't matter which ports we put it on, but with the enterprise switch, it does. So this first link is going to port 30. So we're going to want that in either port 29 or port 31. You have to have it sequential for these aggregations to work. I'll grab another DAC cable and we're going to put it on port 25 on my enterprise switch as the other uplink is already on port 26. And then in my aggregation switch, we're going to put it on port 29. So now we have the four DAC cables connected and we can see that the lights are going off. Two of these should be in blocking mode for spanning tree protocol. These two cables right here are connecting back down to my Synology NAS, and these are on port 23 and port 24, so we'll have to get those configured as well. Now that we have our DAC cables connected, we should see two of these connections in blocking state. So let's click on my USW Pro aggregation. We're going to go over to our ports, and then we'll go to port management. Now on port 32, we could see the circle and a line through it. That is RSTP discarding, so that port is in our blocking state. Our other port should be on our enterprise switch. So I'll click back on my devices, we'll go to my enterprise switch, go to ports, port management, and we could see that port 26 is in blocking state. So spanning tree is working as it's designed. Now to get these connections in an aggregate together, we have to do it in a specific order. So we need to use the switch that's furthest away from our Unify OS console, which would be my USW enterprise PoE switch. So let's click on that switch, go to ports, and then port management. Now, before we put these in an aggregate together, you want to make sure that your computer is connected to the UDM Pro or the UDM SE. If you're connected to the switch, you will drop off. So now to put them in an aggregate together, we'll click on port 25 and then we'll scroll down and we can see the operation is switching. We'll put it on aggregate and then we'll select the other port that we're going to want a part of this group. 
which will be port 26, and then we'll apply the changes. Now we need to go over to my aggregation switch over on devices, and then aggregation, go to ports, and then port management. From the aggregation switch, the USW Enterprise is connected to the port 29 and 30. I'll click on port 29, we'll scroll down, and then we'll go to the operation. Under the operation, we'll put it to aggregate, and then we'll select port 30 and then press apply changes. Now looking at port 29 and 30 on the aggregation switch, we could see this arrow flashing in and out, and that means it's an aggregate. If we look back at our devices, we can see that the USW Enterprise PoE is now connected at 20 gig. So that's how we do an aggregation between two switches. Now that we have the aggregation done between the switches, let's do it for our Synology NAS. I'm gonna start off on my NAS, so we'll click over, and then we'll go to our control panel. From the control panel, we're going to click on network. Within our network, we're going to go to the network interface. And then from here, we could see that we have a couple different NICs active. So we have LAN 2 and we have LAN 3, and they're both getting different IPs. This is on 10.220 and this is on 10.122. So what we want to do, we want to create a new bond. So we'll create the bond. And within the bond, there's a few different things that we could do. We could do balanced SLB, we could do balanced TCP, and then we could do active and backup mode. Since we're using LACP, we're going to want this balanced, and then we'll press next. Now it's asking us which physical links that we want to aggregate. We want to aggregate LAN 2 and LAN 3 together. We'll press next, and this will ask us if we want it to get an IP from DHCP or if we manually want to set it. For me, I'm going to manually set it to 192.168.10.220 and then press done. Now the NAS is setting those network settings. We need to go back to my Unify controller and go to my Enterprise 24 port switch. Click on ports and then port management. The Synology NAS is sitting on port 23 and 24. We're going to click on port 23. We'll scroll down and it's the same thing. We'll go to the operation and then we'll go to aggregate and we'll select port 24 as the second port and press apply changes. Now the aggregation is created on our switch and it's created on our Synology NAS. We should be able to ping the NAS at the new IP 192.168.10.220 and we can see that that's going through. So that's gonna be it for this video on link aggregation within our Unify console, as well as doing a link aggregation group with our Synology NAS. Now, do we really need this in our home lab? And the answer is no. But if you're a network geek like me, seeing that 20 gig connection just makes me happy. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.